Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the one hour chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. Now I mentioned on Thanksgiving uh, when we started to sell off that we may be looking at a possible sneak attack and I said that that wouldn't surprise me at all to see them sell things off on very thin volume. And that's exactly what happened. It went much farther than I thought it would go. And the difference in the volume here is absolutely startling. You can see uh, just a very small amount of volume came in. Uh, the initial sell-off from about 1660 down to around 16 was on virtually no volume at all. It wasn't until we opened up today that we had a continuation selling got all the way down to 1544 so a huge move you can see uh, earlier we had penetrated this fairly consistent trend line here and we were testing this flag formation got below it and then we actually got a sell-off that took us through this trend line so I may end up having to eat crow with my call that there's a 90 percent chance that the bottom is in I definitely did not expect this sneak attack and that appears to be what it is because we have such a huge amount of volume establishing all of this and then on very low volume they come in and put the price down so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens next week am I concerned about this price no I'm, I'm not at all concerned somebody on the member site said that they think that the price is going to go to 12 I don't know, 15 had been the call that I had made for the longest time and based on a lot of technicals. And 12 is possible, as I point out in my comment. If we get 12, then we'll probably be looking at $6 premiums. So we're talking about 18 bucks an ounce now. We're talk probably be talking about 18 bucks an ounce then. Um, it, it's just it's getting to the point of ridiculousness now I think what probably caused this reaction this sneak attack I'll call it is what happened in crude oil and this is very important because we had a massive sell-off in crude oil and you can see we're all the way down to 66 bucks uh, on decent amount of volume but that that's a huge move you can see we're hanging around the support line that was about 76 bucks or so and now you can see we've got this big sell-off if we go out to the daily we can see how severe that is and that tracks all the way back to 2011 with a support line that goes for many many years and then you can see it it collapsed so going out to a long long scale we can see that if we look at the financial crisis, and I want to, we'll take the volume out here. I want to make a comparison as to where we are now and where we were with the financial crisis. So we're looking at a price of $66 on oil. And you can see that during the last financial crisis, we had a top. Let's get this line off of here. We had a top around 150 bucks, basically. And then we had that massive sell-off that started not much later than the Bear Stearns top. That was back in, in uh, the spring of 2008 when silver topped. And then we had these financial firms starting to fall. Bear Stearns was the first one to go. Now you can see the oil continued up. It wasn't until about July that, that oil started down. And then it had this catastrophic collapse. So 66 is the price that we're looking at because we're going to try to find a comparison of where we are relatively to where we were back then. Now, if you look here closely, you can see that the, and this is the weekly, we can't do a daily because it doesn't go far back enough, so we have to use the weekly. The closest candlestick we can find for that is going to be this candlestick right here, and that's going to be October 19th of 2018. So you can see that we were all the way into the fall. Now, if you remember 
back in October of 2008, we were nearing the end of this crisis because they were already starting to roll out. They'd already rolled out TARP and other things, and they were starting to roll out a lot of these bailouts. So that's the equivalent of where we're at. Now, the stock market equivalent is nothing like where we're at right now. So if we look at stocks, um, and the one I like to use is the transport that's the most dramatic. We did have kind of a small reversal today. If you go into the close-in charts, you can see. Uh, but it started with a breakout. So if we go back to that period that we're talking about on the weekly chart, back in 2008 and 2009, we're talking fall of 2008, you can see that the stock market was already falling uh, very dramatically and was down about two-thirds of its move um, but you can see we're totally opposite the case here um, we're barely even pulling back from these all-time highs so what does that mean well I think it means first of all the the oil market is probably a manipulated derivatives market meaning that oil was probably overpriced for quite some time we know that I've shown you the figures before of US gas consumption and uh, worldwide oil consumption and ever since the financial crisis it's been down I think the US gasoline consumption is about a third of what it has been historically so if that's any kind of indicator to indicate how weak the economy is then the economy is still very very weak so I think it's probably true that this high oil price was more a derivatives driven price than a, a true supply and demand price that's going to be the mirror image of silver because uh, oil is going to be artificially propped up with derivatives and silver is artificially suppressed with derivatives but nevertheless we're starting to see that correct back now the question is are we going to have a financial crisis that follows on this oil price collapse now that price collapse is also accompanied by a currency collapse in the Russian ruble that's something that's been covered on Zero Hedge and others so we want to look at that and we'll do the US dollar ruble chart here and you can see that the the ruble is now 50 to one to the US dollar and just the beginning of the um, crisis that we had uh, with the Ukraine and things like that you can see that was back around the beginning of the year so we we're on 33 so we're approaching nearly a 50 percent loss in the value of the ruble now if this is any kind of uh, indicator as well based on the past you can see that the move in the ruble during the last financial crisis back there at that key point you can see there July 2008 you can see the size of the move there but look at the size of the move here that we have now does that pretend a larger financial crisis I don't know so there's a lot of crazy things going on now I want to look at this article about the GOFO rate um, we're waiting to see if Har Harvey Organ's prediction is going to be correct. I think the odds are pretty slim against his prediction being correct. Um, there were a lot of people who were covering the open interest on the COMEX. I haven't looked at the numbers recently, but my understanding is that those dropped dramatically. That would be consistent with the price smash that we've seen in silver and the on low volume that they've managed to cover those somehow or they've managed to get the vast majority to roll their contracts out into another month say February so let's take a look at this uh, gold shortage GOFO rate while we have covered the aberration that is a negative gold GOFO rate previously in extensive detail in this post an abridged version of what negative GOFO means comes courtesy of Deutsche Bank's 
recent discussion on what a successful Swiss gold referendum. To wit, it is interesting to note that benchmark gold dollar swap rates have recently traded negative, meaning investors are paying to borrow gold. This is an unusual this is unusual as gold is traditionally used as a source of collateral for cash financing. A number of factors may play a role such as excess dollar liquidity or an increased demand for collateral on the back of global regulatory developments. In short, a gold shortage at the institutional read commercial and central bank level, not just a shortage but the biggest shortage in history judging by today's latest plunge in the one month GOFO which just dropped to negative 0.5 and worse, one year GOFO that just hit its lowest print in the 21st century and is also about to go negative, something that has never happened before, further suggesting the gold shortage could go on for a long, long time. To be sure, GOFO has printed negative in the past, although the two most prominent historic plunges were due to acute events which promptly renormalized and were not the result of what has now become a chronic gold collateral shortage via the swaps market. The best known example of a complete collapse in the GOFO rate is the September 1999 Washington Agreement on Gold. And you can see that down here. That's this spike down. That uh, That's when that happened. Which was an imposed cap on gold sales mostly European in the aftermath of the Gordon Brown of Gordon Brown's idiotic sale of UK gold to the tune of 400 tons per year. The tangent of the Washington Agreement is quite interesting in its own right. Recall the wor words of, and we'll skip that part here. But how is it possible that there is a gold sh a shortage of gold when gold prices keep tumbling day after day? The skeptics will ask. And of course, that's what the skeptics always ask. So you can see here, uh, let's take a look at the chart real quick and see what they're referring to here. You can see this is where we are right now with this negative GOFO. And you can see that it touched upon negative rates back in fall of 2013, summer 2013, then rallied up. But this is somewhat unprecedented. You could see we had that at that very time frame we were talking about during the financial crisis. Then of course there's like a, a 2001 spike down but nothing that stayed there and then there's that Washington agreement. So now we're getting a rolling over into negative, uh, more of a secular trend into negative GOFO rates. So again, how is it possible that there's a shortage of gold when gold prices keep tumbling day after day, the skeptics will ask? Simple. The shortage involves gold available in the repo market, i.e. gold that already has been rehypothecated one or more times. Keep in mind that central banks rarely, if ever, purchase gold outright in the open market, unlike Russia, of course, and perhaps China, which has been engaging in an unprecedented gold buying spree over the past year. The rest of the commercial and central banks merely rely on shadow banking conduits and other repo channels to satisfy their gold needs, all of which merely demand the presence of synthetic, if not actual, gold. It is this synthetic shadow gold that is now actively disappearing from the system, of course, if and when central banks were to tip their hand and reveal the unprecedented synthetic shortage to the physical market, the actual cleared market may well go bid only. So that's what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, we have a lot of dramatic things going on. The ruble is absolutely collapsing. I'll, I'll show you that here. Um, we'll do a reverse of what we have here. We'll do a ruble US dollar so you can see this is the value of the ruble and that's the weekly chart. So you can see that it is absolutely collapsing. Now just to show you how how much that is correlated with the price of oil we'll go ahead and put a WTI crude oil contract overlaid over the top of it and you can see the correlation there. I'll pull back to the daily. 
you can see the correlation there that we have the collapse of the ruble and the collapse of oil at the same time. So what does this mean? Well, it means that we're in the midst of currency wars and uh, they are now pulling the plug on their derivatives, which have propped up the oil for the longest time. We're getting sympathetic moves in gold and silver to the downside, but we're not yet getting sympathetic moves in the stock markets. So either they're going to continue this deflationary crash that they've instituted really with a sneak attack because this sneak attack occurred during the holiday and it's very dramatic, uh, almost a $10 move in oil. Either they're going to continue this sneak attack and we're going to begin to mimic the financial crisis that happened in 2008 where we start to see firms go under or they're going to turn this around and we'll see a dramatic bounce. And we'll talk to you next time.